Sienna, this is not comfortable. Can you come here, Sienna? Come in, come on. Girl, can I drink my tea, please? Hi there, my name's Catherine. I hope you're doing well. It's been a few weeks since I've actually filmed a video. I pre-recorded a few videos because March was really busy for me. I had friends and family come stay down with me. I had my birthday, which was really nice. I got my nose pierced, which was quite spontaneous and very much influenced by Florence Pugh. So you can only imagine my shock and surprise when I came out of the piercing studio and didn't have Florence Pugh's face. I did have a really nice month, but it's been a while since I've filmed a video, so I'm in a bit of a practice talking to the camera. <laughs> so it's probably good that this video is just a casual TBR of me talking about some books that I'm excited for in April. Honestly, the list I've come up with has got me really excited, so that is a good sign. So the first book that I'm really excited about, I actually got from one of my friends for my birthday, and it's called All the Violet Tiaras Queering the Greek Myths by Jean Menzies. This is a non fiction book exploring the recent surge in queer retellings of Greek mythology written by queer authors. It says from explorations of gender and identity across millennia to celebrating queer love in its many forms all the violet tiaras invites readers to discover the power to be found in remaking these myths time and again carving a space for queer stories to be told with the, all the complexity and tenderness they deserve with a goddess or two for good measure. I love a Greek myth so I do. Song of Achilles is one of my favourite books of all time and I'm so excited to read something non-fiction because I don't read a lot of non-fiction. This is a nice short we accessible book made up of little mini essays it looks like and I just think this is going to be such a lovely book to read when the sun comes out a bit more in April and we can put the garden furniture out and I can go and sit out with Sienna and read about the queerness of Greek mythologies. I think it's going to be fantastic so thank you very much Lucy. The next book I want to read is one that I stumbled upon while my friend was down visiting. We visited Topping's bookshop in Bath and we were just browsing and this cover caught my eye immediately. It is Hell Followed With Us by Andrew Joseph White and it is described as being perfect for fans of Gideon the Ninth and Annihilation. I have heard really good things about Gideon the Ninth but I've not read it. But Annihilation was one of the films that I wrote my dissertation on. I love that film, so this is gonna be perfect. Let me read to you what it's about. 16 year old trans boy Benji is on the run from the cult that raised him. Cult tick. The fundamentalist sect that unleashed Armageddon and decimated the world's population. Desperately, he searches for a place where the cult can't get their hands on him or more importantly, on the bioweapon they infected him with. But when cornered by monsters born from the destruction, Benji is rescued by a group of teens from the local Atchison LGBTQ plus center, affectionately known as the ALC. The ALC's leader, Nick, is gorgeous, autistic, and a deadly shot, and he knows Benji's darkest secret. The cult's bioweapon is mutating him into a monster deadly enough to wipe humanity from the earth once and for all. Still, Nick offers Benji shelter amongst this ragtag group of queer teens as long as Benji can control the monster and use its power to defend the ALC. Eager to belong, Benji accepts Nick's terms until he discovers the ALC's mysterious leader has a hidden agenda and more than a few secrets of his own. Do you know when you see a book's cover and you fall in love with the cover and then you read the blurb and the blurb sounds just as good as the cover looks? It's like the stars align. That is what I feel about this book. That blurb sounds incredible and I am so excited for it. It's young adult and I've been getting back into young adult. Sounds like there's a bit of romance, horror, dystopian, sci-fi, cults. I think this is going to be fantastic. The next book I'm planning on reading is A Fate Inked in Blood by Danielle L. Jensen, which is the first book in a new fantasy series rooted in Norse mythology. I did actually read the sample for this on my Kindle. Oh, Sienna's coming in for a cuddle. Okay. Yeah, I did actually read the sample for this on my Kindle in March already but I didn't go ahead and buy it but then I decided along with my sister-in-law that this would be our book club pick of the month for April. So I am going to read it. I just didn't know how I felt about the sample at first. I felt like it was something I could get into but 
it didn't hook me enough to like go ahead and buy it but now i have to buy it anyway i think i am going to enjoy it it just the bit that i read already it didn't quite get me in yet so the description for this book is a shield maiden blessed by the gods battles to unite a nation under a power hungry king while also fighting her growing desire for his fiery son basically this follows freya who has a secret she has been blessed by a goddess and there's basically this prophecy about her that she and her power will unite the land what i'm interested in is the romance because there's this like forbidden romance with this son of her captor who has been sworn to protect her and if she gets with him then it's putting her whole fate to protect the country in jeopardy <laughs> It sounds like good stuff. <laughs> the next book I'm going to read is one of my most anticipated reads of the year and it is Funny Story by Emily Henry. If Emily Henry writes a book, I'm going to read it. I've never not given an Emily Henry book five stars. I live and die by her. I love her. Sienna, this is not comfortable. Can you come here? Good girl. Can I drink my tea, please? So the premise for this book is that Daphne's fiance, Peter, leaves her for his childhood best friend Petra, Peter and Petra, and Daphne ends up moving in with Petra's ex Miles because they've both just been left by their partners and need a new place to live. Whilst they begin by just ignoring each other and just trying to get through their life, on one particular night they get drunk together and come up with a plan to make their exes jealous by pretending that they have got together themselves. So this is going to be fake dating and I think this is just going to be a wild ride of lots of antics as they start to genuinely fall in love with each other and I can't wait. <laughs> I cannot wait. I feel like the setup for this story has so much promise and it could end up being my favourite Emily Henry book. I think right now my favourite Emily Henry is book lovers but there's something about this description that is just has me in such a chokehold. This comes out at the end of April and it's actually me and my sister-in-law's book pick for May, but I think I'm probably gonna read it as soon as it comes out because um, I am so excited for it, I cannot wait. The next book I'm planning on reading is for my Storygraph Reads the World Challenge and this month is going to be Ghana. So I'm going to read a book by a author from Ghana and a book that is set in Ghana. And what I've decided to go for is Wife of the Gods by Kwe Kwarti. This is a detective fiction novel and I'm so excited for that because I'm so into thrillers right now. I'm loving a thriller, I'm loving a detective novel. So this follows Detective Inspector Darko Dawson, who is a dedicated family man, rebel in the office, ace in the field, and one of the most appealing sleuths to come along in years. When we first meet Dawson, he's been ordered by his cantankerous boss to leave behind his loving wife and young son in Ghana's capital city to lead a murder investigation. In a shady grove outside the small town of Kitanu, a young woman, a promising medical student, has been found dead under suspicious circumstances. Dawson is fluent in Kitanu's indigenous language, so he's the right man for the job, but the local Local police are less than thrilled with an outsider's interference. For Dawson, the sleepy corner of Ghana is rife with emotional landmines, an estranged relationship with the family he left behind 25 years earlier, and the painful memory of his own mother's inexplicable disappearance. Armed with remarkable insight and a healthy dose of scepticism, Dawson soon finds his cosmopolitan sensibilities clashing with age-old customs, including a disturbing practice in which teenage girls are offered to fetish priests as trocacy or wives of the gods. Delving deeper into the student's haunting death, Dawson will uncover long buried secrets that to his surprise hit much too close to home. I just think this sounds so incredible. I'm so excited to read this. I just think this this sounds like it has all the kind of good aspects of a detective fiction novel where the detective himself has a kind of stake in the case and his own like internal problems going on in conjunction with the case he's investigating. I am liking that there's going to be this kind of 
juxtaposition between like his cosmopolitan sensibility with older indigenous practices. I'm just so interested to read this. The next book I'm excited for is another young adult and it's another one that I found just browsing through, I think it was again in Toppings and it is called I Hope This Doesn't Find You by Anne Lang. This is Never Have I Ever Meets to All the Boys if Lara Jean wrote hate emails instead of love letters. So from what I can gather from this plot, this is about a high achiever girl in high school who is top of the class, on track to be valedictorian school captain, all of it. But underneath this pristine facade, she is obviously stressed and frustrated and is a normal teenager. So in order to process these feelings and not let them kind of break through her facade, she drafts emails at night just venting and ranting about whatever's annoying her, leaves them in her drafts, never sends them, it's just like a way of journaling I guess. But unfortunately one day these emails in her draft section get forwarded on to everyone in the school so now everyone knows her feelings about everything. Her facade is entirely broken and the way all of her peers view her has changed drastically. The only person at the school who seems to prefer the side that she has shown through these leaked emails is a boy called Julius, the only boy she's sworn to hate. I just think this is going to be such a fun read. It feels like it's going to be quite spring-like, just a like kind of light-hearted romance with a good lesson in there about not being afraid to be who your true self is even with all the kind of like not so pretty parts. Yeah I think this is just gonna be really excellent. The next book I'm gonna read is another one that I am so excited for. Along with Funny Story this is probably one of my more anticipated reads of the year because it is by an author who I adore even though she has not released a book yet. This is How to End a Love Story by Yulin Kwang. Yulin Kwang is a filmmaker, scriptwriter, director. Yulin Kwang used to upload short films to YouTube and I loved them so much. I think her filmmaking is so beautiful and she's actually the person who is adapting Emily Henry's speech read and people you meet on vacation for a screen. I think she's writing the script for one of them and she is directing the other one so it's all connected. But How to End a Love Story is her debut novel and it's about two people whose lives are linked, Helen and Grant, through a car wreck that ended up killing Helen's sister. The story takes place 13 years later when Helen gets her dream job in a TV writing room and Grant just so happens to be another writer in that writing room and their lives come together again and it's all very tense as they work through these emotions of their past whilst also kind of reconciling maybe new feelings that are coming up between them. That's what I think is going to happen. It sounds like this is going to be a heavier romance than I usually read, probably more in line with kind of Emily Henry's writing which I think sometimes leans more into kind of women's fiction but I love that and I think it's going to be emotional and funny and beautiful. I'm so happy Yulin Kwang's written a book and I'm so excited to read it. Next book I'm gonna read comes out really early in April I think. It's The Reappearance of Rachel Price by Holly Jackson. I'm a big fan of A Good Girl's Guide to Murder series. I think it was one of the best thrillers I've ever read. Never mind like young adult thriller, just like thriller. I love Holly Jackson's writing. Um, I didn't love her last book so much. I forget what it's called, it was called but it was the one that was set in the van. But this, the description for this book sounds really really good. It basically follows an 18 year old girl called Belle whose mother disappeared 16 years ago and is presumed dead. Belle was the only witness to her mother's dis disappearance but she does not remember what happened. So now she's 18 and her family has agreed to a documentary being filmed about her mother's disappearance. But a big twist happens when the documentary has begun filming. Belle's mother Rachel reappears and when she reappears she comes with the most unbelievable story of what happened to her but Belle is suspicious and so she takes it upon herself to find out 
the truth of what happened all those years ago. I love the concept of this, it sounds so good. I think it's going to be really interesting dynamic between a mother and daughter. Ever since I read Rouge and became obsessed with that book last year, I'm kind of obsessed with reading books with complicated mother-daughter relationships. I just think they're so interesting. I also love the idea of a documentary being filmed within the book, so it's kind of got this meta feel to it. When my friend was down, we got really into watching Most Haunted, so I'm just big into a documentary right now. I think it's gonna be great. And as I said before, I'm just really into thrillers right now. I can't get enough of them, so I think I'm gonna eat this one up. And finally, the last last book I wanted to mention that I might read in April is Neighbourhood Watch by Sarah Rida which I stumbled upon when I was just looking at what new releases were coming out in April and this one caught my attention. Again it's a thriller. I swear I am reading other genres but I think the author of this book is a middle grade mystery writer more and this is her first adult. It's described as a black comedy full of relatable characters, ulterior motives and murder. The neighbourhood of Oleander Court is the poster child for suburban bliss. The residents compare lawns beautified by hired help, they monitor home values, they toss perfect furniture because they wanted tapioca, not beige. But when a string of murders rips through the neighbourhood, suspicions abound as new secrets come to light and as more and more bodies are taken away, it becomes clear that the killer is strategically selecting each and every victim, picking off the shallowest, most wasteful of the lot in spectacular fashion and leaving everyone in the neighbourhood to wonder who's next. While most of the neighbours scatter like well-dressed cockroaches, a small group of the neighbourhood ladies team up to solve their local mystery and restore their once peaceful lives. But is this ragtag collection of amateur sleuths truly a united front? With reputations, freedom and personal sanity on the line, the ladies must unmask the killer, even if the killer is among them. I really think this is going to be such an addictive read. It kind of sounds like it's got Desperate Housewives vibes. These rich suburban ladies taking it upon themselves to solve these murders that are slowly killing off their neighbours. I'm interested to see what it's like. I'm very drawn into the cover and the blur, but obviously I've never heard of the author before and she usually writes for middle grade. It's her first adult, but See, even the way the description is written, like, they toss perfect furniture because they wanted tapioca, not beige. That just sounds really funny. And I think if the book is written in that tone, I'm gonna really, really enjoy it. So that's kind of my wild card pick of the month, I think. One I, had, one I haven't heard of at all um, that I might take a chance on. But yes, that is what I've got planned for April. Me and Alex are gonna go up to Scotland at the end of April to stay with some family. So hopefully I'll get quite a lot of reading done. And please let me know if you have anything fun that you're planning to read in April. And I'm sorry if this video was a bit all over the place. I am just really, really out of practice <laughs> talking to the camera, but I didn't wanna miss an upload. Got to jump back on that horse. So thank you so much for watching and sticking around if you made it this far and I really hope you have an amazing upcoming week and I will see you in the next one. Bye!